Hey, what's up? Silas here. This is meant to be a video about crime and punishment and eyebrows. I've been listening to the audiobook of crime and punishment for the last couple of weeks and I came to this part that kind of cl clicked together with a few other things that happened in my life at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but a few days. Just a couple of days. Um, somebody sent me a picture of some someone he had interacted with, a comment that they had, and I just noticed the eyebrows. They were just really manicured and looked like they were painted on or even tattooed on. And I was just like, I don't understand that fashion that females have in certain places where they just some cases they'll just completely shave the eyebrow off uh use stick on eyebrows or draw them on and there's some situations where they have to be tattoo on eyebrows which i prefer bushy eyebrows ladies just let your eyebrows grow you know it's just my opinion and i most guys i know don't really find objections with eyebrows but a lot of these things you know when women say oh we dress up for ourselves <laughs> we don't dress up for men First of all, I'm not quite sure about that, but with the eyebrows, I'm pretty sure that one is almost 100% sure just for other women. Like the handbags, like the shoes, guys don't really notice that thing, those things in general. Um, <laughs> let me get back to the point. So, I sent this picture of Brooke Shields, I was like, look, I remember when I was younger, Brooke Shields was on, who had the good eyebrows. And even if, you, I mean, I think the unibrow is when people are like, okay, that's when they notice. But anything short of, un, anything under unibrow, I don't think anyone really has an objection with. But anyway, um, back to this eyebrow thing. One of my friends is vlogging now, and she sent me this video. Might leave a link in the low bar to that. And she has amazing eyebrows, also a great person added to the eyebrows, but I just noticed the eyebrows because of the camera shots she was taking and had noticed it before, but anyway. So now, Crime and Punishment. Fodor Dostoevsky's book, Raskolnikov, the main character, had met this guy, Mamaladov, earlier on in the book. Mamaladov had told him about his family. It was his wife, his two youngest kids, and his oldest daughter that had become a woman of ill repute because I think there was money straits, the money constraints in the family. Mamaladov was in and out of jobs, couldn't hold a job. He was a drunkard. And then in this point in the book, he had just been killed. And Raskolnikov comes across him and with the help of some police and some people takes uh, Mamaladov's body back to Mamaladov's apartment. And this was the time that they lived in. Most people just lived in this little apartment. So it was his family in just one room pretty much. Just him, Mamaladov, his wife, his two kids. And then Sofia, who's the oldest daughter, who is a woman of ill repute, comes into the room. And then um, Raskolnikov is caught up in the moment. He's a bit drunk himself, I think. He's just been in a situation where, if you guys don't know the main aspect of the story, I'm not going to mention it here. Uh, probably mention that in an interview with his spoilers and things like that. But he leaves some money with him and then goes home that night. And then later that morning, his parents, not his parents, Raskolnikov's mom and father have come in and a couple of other people are there in his room with him. And Sofia Mamaladov comes in to... Um, pass a message on from her mother to Raskolnikov about the funeral. But they had already discussed who Sofia Mamaladov is. Sofia Mamaladov herself, of course, knows that she's a woman of ill repute. She knows what she's doing with um, the sexual nature and things like that. And she sees the two women in there and Dostoevsky makes a point to show that the interaction between Sofia and the two women is very... It's very strained and it's not done through voice, it's not done through words, it's just done through looking at her, the looks that they're giving her. They say uh, his sister, Raskolnikov's sister, gives her an intent look and then the, the mother kind of looks away at her and then even when they're leaving, after the introductions have been made, she kind of think the mother can't even bring it in herself. She was thinking in her mind, like, okay, should I also address her? But no, she doesn't even address her. And Sofia herself knows. Sofia walks in and looks around and sees the people there, sees the two women in specific, they make it make it known to be like yes she notices the two women and she almost runs out to the room she has to be convinced to come back in then when she's convinced to come back in she's asked to sit down she takes a seat and she's put down next next to the mom and and uh sister and she can't even they explain how she felt she couldn't even be around <laughs> the mother and the sister now the mother and the sister Raskolnikov's family they're not exactly aristocracy in fact some of the main part of this situation was the mother had saved up some money had borrowed some money and sent it to Raskolnikov and Raskolnikov caught up in the moment had given all that money to um, the Mamaladovs for the funeral and it gets to the situation where this is showing that even if you were at the poorest of the poor but you hadn't done something certain behavior there were certain social there were certain social constraints not constraints but social social strata, social agreements where it was like shameful for you to be selling yourself sexually 
even if you're the poorest of the poor, that was something that once you get there, you're a woman of ill repute. And this was something that society did itself. They kind of checked themselves. This is something that I think back then and still today, like I'm saying with the eyebrows and the things like this, it's still something that's done without, within females. So this whole slut shaming culture where it's like, oh, you can't slut shame people anymore. I don't think that's, that's, it's not really, I don't want to say it's not proper because it's done in some places, but I think it's done in very few places. Most places that's still done, that's still something that's done within the females. Now, with the slut shaming culture, I think even within that, there's a spectrum in the slut shaming culture where I think there's certain levels of like, no, you can't actually go that far. You see some of this, there's also double standards. You see some of this with um, situation with some of these um, accusations coming out for sexual impropriety. impropriety. I know with Senator Al Frank and in specific, there's people on the left who are saying Leanne Tweedin was posing a playboy, blah, blah, blah. She was talking about this. So she's questionable. Yet you have situations where people question what other women have done. Some of these same people are like, oh, you can't question, you can't talk about her history. Now you also have a situation where Pamela Anderson, who was a well-known playboy, playboy playmate from some years back, decades back, I think. She's 50 now. And she came out and said some of these women knew what they were getting into. Some of these women... You, you, I mean, she's also very, she's very vocal and she's in some organizations about empowering women and having women protect and secure themselves, have the agency in themselves and get into a situation where she's like, don't go to a hotel room with these people. Some of these women understand it's a quid pro quo. I do this for you and then you do this for me. And some situations, there's men lied about the things that they gave them. But some situations, those women did that and they did advance their career through their sexuality. Now, are they going to return the that what they got from those advances are they going to return the advances they got from the advances 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 i don't know um so yeah that's just some thoughts on it and maybe that's why maybe that's why people don't need eyebrows anymore i don't know i'm trying to look in this video right now if i had my eyebrow drawn on me can i still do the people's eyebrow like the rock and the, I, I guess even if it's drawn and tattooed on since the skin is still moving you can still be expressive but i was kind of thinking like okay maybe because they're trying to do the slut shaming thing since they don't have their equipment anymore they don't need you don't need to give somebody a weird look askance and whatnot so you don't really need the equipment anymore but yeah um that's it for now yeah, like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to head out to Nairobi later. I'm going to take some film and stuff. Might have some videos up of just that, but I'll probably just be taking some video and stuff to put up in subsequent videos. But uh, let me know if you guys have listened to or read to Crime and Punishment. I wish I had done this earlier. I'm really enjoying the process through it, the book, and yeah. Let me know what you guys think about eyebrows too. I really like eyebrows. Um, yeah, like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye.